Oh yeah. There we go. Hello. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Toad TV. I am Mary Beth. I am Helen. We are the creative hands and minds behind Toad Hollow. And it is a little bit chilly today in the hollow, so I am wearing my Carba sweater, which you can see a little bit of. This is by uh, Kate Davies, I think. And uh, you hold two strands of DK weight double to marl it and make the sweater. She did it in one color. I did it in several because I had leftovers from all different colors and um, I just made it into a fall colored sweater. So I have to say, when I wear this at shows, I get the most comments about it. Because people stop you all over the place. Yeah, it's a really, really, really comfortable sweater. I didn't, I haven't really worn it very much just because it's um, kind of a bulky weight with the DK held double, but um, it's very light and very comfortable. Yeah. Really, really comfortable. So, all right. Oh, dear. Oh, to the German shepherd. We have a dog walking by and uh, they're having words. You go yes. outside <laughs> and they are having words. So, all right. Oh, we have been, we have got yarn laid out all over the table because we are here to do yarn pairings. Um, talk about some projects and do yarn pairings for them. And then we thought we would open the floor to you guys and um, see if you had anything that you wanted us to pair or pick colors for. If you have a project in mind that you're thinking of making and um, you want us to help you pick colors for it, now's a great time to do it. Yeah. So we thought we'd try and see what we could do to help you guys. Okay, so what can you mix mo with mohair to make it thicker? If you hold mohair with just about anything, it adds an extra right. thing. I would start with fingering weight, and then it's going to make it a slightly bulkier fingering. Um, not quite close, DK. Yeah, close to a sport probably. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I would start with fingering weight, and then, but uh, people hold mohair with everything yeah so i think very few people actually use mohair by itself although i will say hohi hulo Catelli, we were looking at sweaters she's got a brand new sweater out that has just bands of mohair yeah no thank you it looks beautiful but knitting with that thin a yarn plus i don't want just mohair right coming across here no. for me so so Okay, it's snowing in Merrill, Wisconsin. Perfect day to read, knit, sew, and cross stitch. Well, I agree with you wholeheartedly. She said, if only she didn't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so English fingering weight is sock weight yarn. Um, so it is uh, usually 100 grams is about 400 yards. Uh, hold on. It's like 400 meters, too. It's um, like 430 meters, I think. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit different. Let me do yards to meters. But we go generally lace, fingering, slash sock, sport, DK, worsted, Aaron, bulky, super bulky, chunky. Oh, okay. So 400 yards is about 356, or 365, 366 meters. Um, and uh, double knitting is more DK for us. Because it's a, uh, um, the f double knitting is the fingering held double to get the DK weight. The DK, yeah. Okay. Uh, Snow Baby said it's four ply. Uh, some fingering is four ply. Ours is, um, some fingering weights are single ply. I know a lot of people that like to use a single ply fingering for um, shawls and that kind of thing. I like a, a four ply. Yeah. But it is, let's see. This, it's that thick. <laughs> that is fingering, and this is our DK. So you can see the difference there. Fingering to the DK. And then, and then this is our... Uh, this is sweater. This is Aaron. That's our Aaron weight. So this is 400 yards to 100 grams, 230 yards, and 180. Okay. Okay. Got the snow in the East Coast. 
I don't think that's East Coast. Okay. Because we did not get snow on the East Coast. Well, um, they might have gotten it a little bit further north. Yeah. The sweater, your sweater. She, somebody's asking, uh, Suzanne says she loves her sweater. Is that DK? It's DK held double. So it's uh, bulky. But um, it's the Carbath sweater. Oh, Eau Claire. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> see, if you're from Wisconsin, Wisconsin, you know the EC equals Eau Claire. Um, it is uh, DK held double and it's the Carbath sweater. So uh, we do have a shop to visit. It is toadhollownj.com. And not um, an actual physical shop, though. No. Oh, you're only online. Yeah, we're only online. Sorry about that. Okay. Well, actually, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, I like doing it online. Oh, Jenny's getting New York tomorrow. Uh, in New She's getting New York tomorrow. She's getting snow in New York tomorrow, six to nine inches. We are getting all of the rain. We're getting about two to four inches of rain tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, knock on wood, it is uh, going to be rain because two to four inches of rain is like 20 to 40 inches of snow. Don't want it. Yeah. Don't want it. No, thank you. I am. Um, it's a March. It's the middle of March. I am ready for like this cold weather to go away. And I want yeah, my I was really and very, 60s. I was really very happy with our 60 degrees last week. Yeah. Uh, where all my daffodils popped and everything. And now they're all just like. All huddled in amongst themselves. So, uh, From rainy Estonia. Yeah, we're going to be getting the rain tomorrow. So, raining in the panhandle now. Uh, that's because it's coming up to us yeah. tonight. Okay. All right. So, um, should we start doing some yarn pairings? Yeah. Okay. Um, we can start. We'll start with um, the 20 bird shawl, which is uh, the Helen Stewart mystery knit along, which uh, the first clue dropped yesterday. Um, Okay, so I think it's the 24 birds, right? The 24, 24 birds. birds. Okay. Um, we have a couple of different combinations for this one um, because uh, Helen's going to be starting it. Shall we start with yours? And you can show them what you're doing? Yeah. All right. I've already forgotten what I chose. So I wrote okay. it down. <laughs> okay, there you go. So I'm going all with the new uh, collection, um, and I'm going to, it, ugh, excuse me, color A is going to be Hidden Entrance, color B is going to be Whims of Wisteria, C will be the Rose, what are we calling this? Rambling Roses. Rambling Roses, and then the Weeping Willow. Will end everything. You have changed that. Every time you hold these up, you have a different one for D. No, this was a, when I was doing it with the four. Yeah. This was with the new collection. It was always going to be this. Oh, okay. I thought you um, were doing the pink as uh, the pink. No, when I was doing um, it with dahlias. Okay. I was using dahlias as a, okay as D. So this is as of now <laughs> what I'm going to do. Um, so. Uh, We'll see. We have to pack up all the orders for, uh, we're gonna pack them up today. Um, and hopefully I will have four of the, these four left in fingering weight so I can start today. Cause my prize for working today is that I get to cast this on tonight. We have dyed the first round of the new collection. This is anything that came through last weekend. Right. Anything that came through after last weekend, we are now um, going to start dyeing that tomorrow and getting that out. So the first round will hopefully be going out tomorrow morning. Right. Winifred is across the street. Oh, Winifred. There is a St. Bernard that, her name is Winifred. I'm sure she's a lovely dog. Our dogs hate, they both hate they each hate other. They hate each other. It's they a, absolutely hate each other. And um, Hugo goes nuts when he's in the yard and she's walking by. I mean, she will be down half a block and we know Winifred's coming. Yes. Because he'll just go nuts. However, we walk by her yard, and she's out there barking her damn fool head off, and he's just walking along ignoring her. Yep. Peeing on her lawn. <laughs> but ignoring her. Well, she's across the street now ignoring him. Yeah. So it's, it's what they do. It's how they do it. However, if, they, if she gets her close to the gate, she, they go crazy. So. All right. Well, now it's like... No. Green. Green at the end. We shall see. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's see. 
Uh, up next, we have, all right, um, this one is really, really pretty. So we're going to start with Greenback Books, and then we're doing Succulents. So there's Succulents. Dahlias. Ah, here's Dahlias. And we're winding up with Antique Mauve. So again, this is for the 24 bird shawl. So A would be the greenback books into succulents, into dahlias, and antique mauve. Okay. Um, Shall we come back to the comments after we finish these? Yeah. All right. So then the next one is Keep Greenback Books. We're going to do Spruce goes next. This is Greens. Here comes Carisford because always there's got to be Carisford. And winding up with Dahlias. So Dahlias is the pop on this one. All right. So this is... Again, these are all, all these combinations are for the 24 uh, birds shawl that um, Helen Stewart is doing. All right, so this is Greenback Books, Spruce. Sorry, I gotta get my hands out of there. Mr. Carisford and winding up with Dahlia's as a pop at the end. And the Spruce is looking kind of blue on the screen. It's a forest green. Okay, and then we're going to do dahlias, succulents, um, mauve, and wind up with spruce. Going heavy with the pinks and the greens. I like this one. I like that one too. Very, very pretty. All right. So now, um, okay, so, so let's do questions. magic Quickly. in the air, purple velvet, whimsical gourds, and poison apples. All right, hold on. I don't know that I have magic in the air. Well, she goes off. Um, let's see. Somebody asked, oh, Cheshire Cats asked me the sweater that I'm knitting out of the buttery, the hidden entrances. That's the pearl string sweater. Um, so it's P-U-R-L, strings, sweater. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, we do not have these listed as groups for the 24 birds, uh, knit along. We, uh, just, so just buy them separately. Um, and if you have, if you need anything, um, repeated, just shoot us a comment and we can repeat them again. All right, somebody was asking about... So magic in the air, purple velvet, whimsical gourds, and poison apples. Okay, I have three of the four. And yes, they would work. They're going to be beautiful. Yeah. They're gonna be absolutely beautiful. Um, I don't have the magic in the air anymore. Um, but that it, one... It's a combination of those three colors. Right. Um, so yes, it and that anything that goes together in a collection is made to work together. So if you're picking colors from a collection, you know that they're going to be beautiful. Can we show greenback books, spruce, and the yellow from the Secret Gardens together? Yes, greenback books, spruce. Oh my goodness, those are beautiful. If you needed four, if you give me wildflowers. That is just, I'm trying to get it in the best, there we go, that's getting the best colors. Yeah, I think I would take out wildflowers. Okay, oops. If you need four. Oh, well, yeah. If you I, hate pink. I was trying to do something other than If you than don't like I pink, I know to. that there are people that don't like pink. Um, we could always put in the purple because the purple would be really pretty with it too.
But honestly, if you have a color, a three color shawl yeah. that you're doing that you just have those three in, that is going to be so pretty. Yeah. So, so pretty. The Lunaria would be great in this. Oh, it would be. That would be very yes. pretty. That'd be very, very pretty. Okay. Um, oh, excuse my stomach. Okay. Thank you to everybody who's saying beautiful things about our yarns. Somebody says, are they due? And I'm assuming, I'm assuming you're asking me, are they DK? And um, we are holding up various different weights. The shawls that we are pairing right now use uh, fingerings. Fingering weight. Yes. Um, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure all the shawls that we're looking at are all fingering. So, okay. All right. Then the next shawl that we were looking at is, um, are we ready to move on to the next one? I think so. Yeah. I think we're okay. covered. Okay. Then the next one that we were looking at is the foreshadow shawl by Stephen. No, the foreshadow shawl is a crochet shawl by, um, hold on. You gonna pull it up on there? Yeah. Okay. This is a three color crochet shawl. This is by Naomi Dillon. And that is what it looks like. It looks like there are two colors on either side and then a variegated in the middle. So we were thinking that um, starting with, will you be mine? Do you still have spruce? Here's spruce and moon forest. These three together we thought were really pretty. So it looked like she put a variegated in the middle and then uh, two tonals on either side. So we thought those would be very pretty. Then we also thought so this is this is moon forest. And then spruce and will you be mine? We thought uh, greenback books, dahlias, and Midwinter's Night in the middle. That would be really pretty as well. And let's get Greenback Books forward a little bit more. There you go. There, that's Dahlia's better. And then using the new colors, we would do Hidden Entrance, um, rambling roses and wandering paths. I'm trying to get these so that the color is true. It's like this one always goes, the third one always goes into shadow. So this is the buttery yellow one. It's looking, to me, it's looking fluorescent yellow in the screen. Um, but it's a soft buttery yellow. And then this one is like an icy blue green color. Like a robin's egg blue, actually. So. Okay. All right. And then the last one that we did, we were talking about, was the Faded Undulation by Stephen West. Um, let's see if I can pull that one up. We have a couple different options on this one. So this is the Faded Undulation by Stephen West. And this calls for four, five, I'm five, sure five. five different colors that you fade into one another. All right, so starting with Balloon Confetti, working into She Sailed Across the Ocean, working into Water Song, then aqua, I haven't done much with the blues, so we figured we'd hit you hard with the blues with Stephen West. And then Nyad is the end. So if I take these two, all right, so you put okay. those would be so pretty. That would just be just like a oceany. Yeah. I mean, this beachy is a shawl. really, really yeah. pretty combination. All right, and then we did 
Sage, Greenback Books. Greenback Books is getting a lot of play today. Yeah, do, can you tell which are our favorite colors? Uh, succulents. Sage and Greenback Books are very similar. They're just, uh, Greenback Books is a darker version of the same color. Well, it's, um, this is more of a tonal. This has a lot more variation to it. Right. Uh, because it's got layers on top of layers. Then uh, you go into Dahlia's and you wind up with Mauve. Okay, so here, I'll take these two. Or I'll take these three. So you have these three going like that, those five all together. That would be really, really pretty. That's a really pretty combination. And then our last one would be Wildflowers with Wisteria, Dahlia's. Dancing in the Moonlight, and Purple Velvet of Hustle Street. So these are for our purple lovers. I like this one. I like this one too. All right, I like them all. Well, you know, when you have really pretty colors, how did we get into dyeing yarn? We used to make project bags for people. Okay, oh, okay, and um, we would sew bags for people and we would get the same comment over and over again that people had too many uh, project bags. They kept saying, which I'm sorry. Really? <laughs> you don't need that kind of negativity in your life. Anyway, um, so Helen said that what we should do is start using or making the um, the thing that you have to, the you have to keep, the consumable, the thing you have to keep buying, which is dyeing yarn. And I told her that I never, ever wanted to dye yarn. Everybody else could dye yarn. I would knit with it. There is a podcast way, 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 way back mm -hmm. where we say we're never going to dye yarn. And uh, then she started dyeing yarn and I started telling her what I wanted her to do to make the yarn the way I wanted it. And um, she said, no, if I wanted that, I would have to do it myself. <laughs> so we started dyeing yarn. So we started dying um, 2015, I think. No, 2015. 16? We started the podcast 16. in 2016. 2015. No, 2016. 2016. You're right. 2016. So it's probably 2017 we started. And uh, I think it was October of 2016. We really picked up in 2018. Actually, we were no. like really hitting our groove. Uh, in the beginning of 2020. We went to TNNA in 2018. Right. So we had been dying for a while because we were taking yarn with us. We actually, we hit our, we hit our like real groove in 2019 because that was when we did Maryland Sheep and Wool. Right. Um, and we were just like in a, an upward trajectory. And then, you know, this thing happened where the world shut down. Right. And then things got really busy. <laughs> um, so that's how we started. Um, Church Mouse asked, do we get the yarn base white or cream and then dye it? Yes. This is the color of the yarn that we get. This is Snow White, which just has uh, black speckles on it. It's a plain skein of yarn with black speckles. So this is the color that we get and we do everything else to it. Carol, said she still laughs at that one. She listened to it and just chuckled, never yarn and never tea. That's right. I, I said it tasted like dirty water. There's one out there, too, that says we'd never cross stitch. And we hate hand sewing. Yep. When we so say if you, never, if you hear don't. me say, if you hear us say we hate something and we're never going to do it, just assume that like two or three months down the road. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like the, the rabbit hole we jump into. Right. Have we ever uh, considered selling the Toad Hollow logo tote bags again? Uh, yes, because I was just looking at one the other day, and I'm like, that was a great bag. Yes, it does. Oh, oh do you know, I have one That's that, um, hair. I have one that is, um, Women Are the Guardians of Humanity. Oh, That's yeah. going way back. Oh, yeah. Um, we also have, I go back and see some of our bags and think, oh, those were really nice bags. That actually is a really pretty bag. Yeah. Why do we not do that? It's got your, um. Your squirrel in here. Yeah. Honestly, why are we not making these? We have to get rid Do of you fabric know why? first. Do you know why? Because 
getting the logo completely centered mm. and lined up straight and then you think it's perfect and you sew it and it comes up like this and you have to take it all out again frustrating um carol says and next up helen mosaic crochet and tote bags yes please with the tote hollow logo um actually we were looking at yet another mosaic crochet bag <laughs> today oh i know it's really pretty um Uh, how do we dry the yacht wool in the muggy summer weather? Patience. It, uh, it, it dries eventually. Um, right now, with the heat on in the house and the dry, dry weather, uh, we can, it's like 24, 36 hours a year and it'll be dry. And during the summer, it's probably four or five days. We have to wait for the yarn to dry. Oh, here we found this for uh, minis. This is the brioche break. Blanket by Stephen West. For those of you that want to use up minis, you're marling. And um, it you, is... Can you go in to show the brioche stripe? Oh, here he is. And you can see the brioche stripe. It's a great way to uh, use up your minis. I adore this picture that he's got where... That one, yeah. He's knitting with his friends. I mean, honestly, anybody who knits with their dog like that is okay in my book. Um, but I was looking for... Carol says, oh my God, 9,000 yards with fingering held doubled. She loves it. It is, but it's just, I mean, we have one of those um, rolling carts and that's just one. Yeah. And it is just full of fingering And then we leftovers. have boxes. And then we have boxes all over the place. Um, this is the Spring Love Crochet Along, and this is the Crochet Mosaic Blanket that we were looking at. Uh, she uses two colors, a cream, and then she used a variegated, but here you can see it's got it's bunnies. Got bunny, those are bunnies there. I think those are sheep up here. And flowers and stuff, so it's really, really pretty. She's got a whole bunch of different ones. This one is by um, Ana Moray Suarez. So if you're into that kind of thing, that's very cool. Okay. Carol says she's thinking uh, with the that Stephen West has wanted to go on for a long time. Oh yeah, yeah. And she said she saw that mosaic yesterday too. We're looking at the same feeds and must learn how to do this. It seems like it's fairly simple. Straightforward. Um, just. I, I want to find one that's small, almost like a mug rug. Okay. So just that, to so practice I can do first. Like uh, the smaller, and I haven't got this whole long thing, and I right screw it up. So, um, all right. So then the last thing that we were thinking of, um, blankets are a major life commitment, but they are fantastic when you finish them. You feel yeah. so good. And you have something really good that you can... And Use. I mean, if you're knitting fingering weight held double, you're knitting DK, so it does go a little bit faster than... Yeah. Um, um, I was thinking, uh, Helen was talking about the City Limit sweater that she made, which is holding two strands of fingering uh, together, marling them. Um, well, you start off, you hold the two one strands color, of the one color. And then you, when you get to to switching colors for you marl the two colors together to fade them right so i was thinking that doing that out of the new collection i'm missing one what am i missing the blue blue here we go doing one out of these guys a city limit sweater it would be really really be pretty yeah that may be my next project because that is my that sweater is so comfortable right uh, i was telling her the only thing is um I knit my eye cord neck just a little tight, so the next one I'll just make it a little bit looser. That's all. Um. Okay, does anybody else have any questions or yarn pairings they'd like us to do? Uh, so I think somebody asked if we're going to make a list of the shawls and the colors that we put together. Are we going to make listings for it so that they can buy them as kits? Is that it? No, I think she just wants to know... You, you, so they don't have to worry about making all the notes which colors we used. Okay, we can do um, that. So what I'll do is um, I'll do show notes 
uh, underneath for, so if you, you don't even have to watch the whole thing over again when this uh, goes up, not as the live, but as the regular one, then Do I'll Do you want to just put a comment in? That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. And you said show notes. I was, I was going to say, do you do it as a show note or do you do it as a comment? No, as a show note. As a show note. Okay. Because yeah. right. um, it'll have the links to everything. So It would be nice as kits. Well, we could put it together as kits and list them. It's just yeah. going to be a die to order type of thing. Um, and if we have them in stock, we'll send them right out. But if not, a lot of these are a mixture of fingering and DK. So, so yeah, we'll, ju we'll just do, we'll list the kits too. Yeah. Why not? Um, somebody, Janet says she likes the bird paintings in the background. Who is the artist? Uh, TJ Pier Max. One. P Pier One, is that where we got them yeah. from? I don't think it even has an artist on it. Yeah, it's probably just a digital print. Uh, when Pier One went out of business, I got them. They were in the back. I love them. Yes. Uh, Cheshire Cat says um, if she has two, if she has a DK pattern holding two of our fingerings together will equal the DK. It should, yes. Yes. Um, I see a lot of European yarns um, calling for worsted weight, which is actually the length of our DK. So the worsted, um, I would just check the lengths. If it's equal to about 200 to 230 yarn, uh, yards, then yes, holding fingering together will be perfect. Also, the best thing you can do is, and do as I say, don't as, do as I do because I never do it, but do a gauge. Yeah. Do a gauge swatch. Um, just so you know that it's going to work. Right, because um, our fingering weight is 400 yards, so yeah. holding a double to make a DK is going to be 200 yards. Right. As opposed to the 231 that is our DK weight. Right. I miss Pier 1, too. I love yes. Pier 1. I was just saying the other day, because they had great spring, they had great holiday stuff, um, because Pottery Barn is great. It's just they're very beige. Yes. Pier 1 was much more colorful and much and more whimsical. And a little whimsical. bit whimsical, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. I saw that Carol said, who needs uh, negativity of gauge? <laughs> you know, really, Carol? Uh, Jenny ordered the whole collection to do the city limits. Oh, did you really? It's gonna okay. Be it's going to be so pretty. So, so pretty. Uh, and Samantha loves your sweater. Thank you very much. Again, this is the Carbeth by uh, Kate Davies. Right. Okay. All right. Oh. If nobody else has any questions, I think that's just about it for us. We are, um, we have twisted all the yarn. We now have to twist um, all the minis Somebody that go with, okay. We have to twist all the minis to put together the mini skein sets. Um, that's going to take quite a bit of time. But the really good thing about that is I can put my book on in my ears and listen to that as I'm twisting. Um, the uh, I'm listening to The Air of Fire right now, which is the third in the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Maas. And I have to tell you, I'm whipping through these, really enjoying them. Um, okay. Kathleen says, I have the Jane Austen minis and was gifted a darker purple. Any suggestions? Um, okay. Um, upholstery work. Upholstery? No, purple. she was gifted a darker purple. She's looking for a, 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 a pattern to go with it. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of... Um, the Hi Ho kit was really pretty. That used five colors and a main color, but you needed two skeins of the main. So if you don't have two of the so we're looking. darker purple, that might be a problem. If you have two skeins of something else, the Hi Ho uh, shawl was really pretty. That was by I Rock Knits. Um, six colors, right? Was it six? Oh, six or more. Because she had the five from Jane Austen right. and one more. She has a mini skein set, though. She doesn't have a full no, set. No. So, um, shawl. Where can we get your sweater pattern? Carbeth sweater. It's on Ravelry. And um, you can get it. Uh, yeah, you can get it on Ravelry. I think it's by Kate Davies. And it's C-A-R-B-E-T-H. Let me make sure it's still available. 
Oh, that's very pretty. That's too much. Okay, yeah, it's, um, here's the picture. It's the Carbeth design, and it's on Kate Davies. It's uh, by Kate Davies. She might have, I don't know whether she has a um, website or not. Let me see. She doesn't have it on Ravelry? Maybe? She does, but... Oh. Um, I don't know if you guys have... I don't know if everybody has Ravelry or not. So, let's see. Well, I mean, if you search Kate Davies on Google, her website, her, if she has a website, it'll come She up. does have a website. It's KDD and Co. And um, she has a pattern store. So I'm pretty sure the Carbeth is in there. Yes, it is. Okay, so if you go to shopkdd.com, it will come up and you can do that. What was the Helen Stewart that you did with the minis? The surprise show? <laughs> no. The surprise party? But that would be pretty. Yeah, the surprise party surprise would work. surprise party would work? Um, um, the 100 Acre Wood. Oh, okay. I don't know whether that, I don't, I'm not sure she called for multiples. I have a tendency when somebody puts up a single or a two color shawl. Um, Excuse the <laughs> Um, that I just turn it into multiples. Oh, okay. All right. Your chewy box on? Your chewy box just oh, Chewy is here. Okay, so he's got to go uh, monitor FedEx. So, um, Oh, Carol just recognized. Carol just noticed your sweater, and that you've been talking about it. So, um, so but as far as the, I think just go to Ravelry and search shawls, because you can you can narrow it down to, I want to use six colors. I want a shawl. Um, if you there want are a use, lot of cowls. I was going to say, if you want to just use the mini skeins and not use the darker purple with it, then I just finished. Hold on. And there are cowls, too, I think, that... Um, I know Hohe has one that uh, uses a main color, and then she uses the minis for it uh, with the main color. So if I do... Let's see. I just finished doing the Knitting at the Library cowl. I have to block it. But um, by iRock Knits using the new collection. And she's got Knitting at the Library and Knitting at the Library Part 2, which is more lace. But again, a great way to use mini skeins. And these cowls are so comfortable. Because... You just wear it like that, and now my neck is warm. Yeah. Now my neck is too warm. I was going to say, but, you, you have a turtleneck sweater on in bulky weight. This is it's very, not that very cold comfortable. <laughs> very comfortable, Cal. Anyway, um, these are a great way to use mini skeins. Also, if you were so inclined, um, the stripey hat. What was the stripey hat we did? Oh. There's a striping, a stocking yeah. hat hat, or a stocking cap that has, it goes all the way down and ends. You can end it in a um, pom-pom. That's great for using minis. So, um, the, it is the Carbeth Lori, and it is all different colors that we had left over from many years ago. Um, we did a whole bunch of fall colors, and these were what we were left. And I just was using up leftover yarn, and mixed and matched oh amy says that uh jude harper from stranded has a great cowl that uses minis a main color and then minis 
So that'll be a longer cowl. Okay. Um, and then Adrian wanted to know, do we have any crochet pattern favorites? Um, the problem is I don't crochet as much. So I don't really do a lot with crochet. Let's, let's see, it's Deanna something, hold on. Oh, I thought this one was pretty. This is the Nectar Shawl. Excuse us down in the bottom because I'm monitoring us down here. But that's a crochet shawl that uses a, a bunch of different colors. Who did... Um, oh, that is really pretty. Isn't it? Who did the uh, Lost in Time? Uh, Miho Crochet is a favorite. And now you get to... Um, You get to learn all different stitches is what I'm trying to spit out. Let's see. I'm going to do crochet shawls. How do you spell Miho? M-I-J. It's a J? Okay. So let's see. She has the Secret Paths shawl. She's, she's a Joanna Lynn Hall, too. And that is just so pretty. All her shawls could be done in minis. You did the Lost in Time in a mini skein set. 50 grams. 50 grams, okay. The Dragon Belly is really beautiful. So she's got lots of really gorgeous ones. She makes me think that maybe I do want to crochet. And then I start doing it and realize I really don't like it that much. Uh, Sis Homemade, they have a whole bunch of really nice ones. That's a really pretty crochet shawl. Hugo is busy today. I know there are a lot of dogs out. People are out walking their dogs. Okay, if anybody else has anything, please, um, oh, Church Mouse. But she's, where do you see Church Mouse? Uh, the last one is Church Mouse. Oh, okay, that's similar to the one I'm, this is half a granny square shawl by Church Mouse. That's really cool, too. Oh, there you see it. I saw that somebody put just put in something about how to um, leave the comments. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna because I know we ran through some of the colors. I'll I'll just make the listing. Okay. So you don't have to go through the transcript. Okay. Uh, Deanna Ramsey um, does really nice ones where it's multiple color shawls. This is crochet. That's really pretty. If you go to Ravelry and on the left hand side, you can start uh, filtering your projects and um, you put in crochet instead of knitting, and a whole bunch of things come up. Some yeah. really good ones. Somebody said the Ever Blue Shawl. Let's see. Carol says uh, she searched uh, and sorted by Hot Now. So she can see uh, which are the, the hottest crochet shawl patterns right now. And she also says ever blue shawl. Okay. Oh, well, oh, that is pretty. That's very pretty. This is the ever blue shawl. So if you take the blues that we listed for the Stephen West one. Yeah. That would be perfect. That is really pretty. Okay, and then she says the tulip shawl. The tulip tulip square shawl is on the top of her list. She just started the Everblue. Okay, so the tulip square. Well, there's tulip square throw. That's really pretty. 
see if I can get that bigger. There we go. That might be really pretty to use up different uh, colors. You do yeah. each one in a different we, color. That yeah. would be pretty. That would be nice. I think right below it, though, was the, the shawl. Was it? Okay. Oh, no, it's a... Shrug, Cardi. Well, here's the scarf. Somebody took that tulip square and went to town with it. There's always a cherry... Sandra Cherry Heart. Yeah. She has great patterns. Um, Wilma Westenberg is the pattern designer for yes. the tulip. Okay. Um, and Jess says, Jay Hooked Crochet has a few beautiful crochet shawls too. Okay. All these places you can go to look right. for shawls. And Genevieve's birthday is next week. So happy birthday, Genevieve. The dog is being very loud and very demanding today. You can now hear how the dog runs the show. Okay. Really, if that's a surprise to anyone, they have not been watching very right. long because... Um, I did see that somebody said that uh, Kate from The Last Lonely House um, said that uh, she called us the hollow toads. <laughs> oh, did she? <laughs> She was uh, just finding us, babe, but uh, Kate called us the hollow toads. Um, um, Carol says, as it should be, Hugo is in charge. Yes, he is. Very much so. Yes. Well, we need somebody with half a brain. So. Right. Um, okay, guys. I think we are going to get going. Thank you guys very much. Have a lovely weekend. Um, oh, somebody said that uh, J-Hook Crochet is on Ravelry, and, or is on Etsy instead of Ravelry. Right. Thank you. So if you're looking for the J-Hook Crochets, look there. Um Anyway, oh, you're welcome, Carol. I'm glad you had fun. So we are off. We are going to be labeling all the yarn and packing it up so that the mailman will be just so happy with us tomorrow when all those packages go right. up. But and before we pack up this yarn, I'll take pictures and we'll list the kits that we mentioned. Uh, we'll list them as kits uh, and we'll put them in the shop. Yeah. So give me an hour or so and they'll be in the shop. Okay. All right. Well, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Yes, go forth and create. And we will see you on Tuesday. Tuesday, yes. For our regularly scheduled program. And we will be um, actually recording it on Monday because we have very special visitors coming on Tuesday. Right. So the nephews are coming. Right. Just going to put it out there. Very um, excited. Okay. And somebody, uh, my brother sent us a text message that uh, we're planning an Easter egg hunt. And he said we might want to plan it for Tuesday instead of Wednesday because it's going to be raining. Of course it's going to rain. But little does he know, we are planning to do it inside anyway. We have a very big house. We do. Same toad time, same toad channel. Exactly, <laughs> Genevieve. Okay. Uh, Jess right. said uh, the Gondor shawl is particularly beautiful. And that sounds really, I mean, the name alone is getting my attention. Oh, my God. So that's going to be on Etsy, though. So. It's on Etsy? Okay. Yeah. All right. We will go look that up. Right. All right. All right, everybody. Have a great weekend. Yes. Uh, go forth and create. <laughs> there, we're going to confuse everybody. Right. And we will see you on Tuesday. Bye. Bye.